Hi, this is FAIR TV. I'm Peter Hart. Terrorist chatter among Al-Qaeda operatives has led the United States to close embassies around the world. And the corporate media are feeding into this sense of crisis and using the crisis to give a boost to the beleaguered National Security Agency. Across the Sunday chat shows on August 4th, lawmakers lined up to send the same message. Sure, we've seen this controversy over the NSA's surveillance, but this is the kind of surveillance that stops terrorists. Meet the Press told viewers they'd get a debate, but what they got was far-right Rick Santorum and MSNBC liberal Joy Ann Reed basically agreeing with each other. Meet the Press did have one critic. Unfortunately, it was a tape of Senator Frank Church appearing on the show in 1975. But let's say all of this is real and the threat is what they say it is. Can anyone be sure that NSA snooping led the government to uncover this supposed plot? Well, one report from the Associated Press says maybe not. Quote, an intelligence official said the controversial NSA programs that gather data on American phone calls or track internet communications with suspected terrorists played no part in detecting the initial tip. Nonetheless, the main lesson of all this is to keep worrying. Here's CBS. Now, it's important to remember there is no expiration date for this terror scare. Frankly, unless operatives are captured or analysts turn up some kind of evidence that Al-Qaeda is changing its mind, the threat in aura will be open-ended. In related news, NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden's temporary asylum in Russia has prompted outrage and generated headlines about Russia's outrageous defiance of the United States. The Washington Post reported that Russia had opened a fresh wound with the United States. On CBS's Face the Nation, Russia's move was considered some kind of weird taunt. This is almost like uh, it, it's, it's kind of following a kind of a high school scenario here. And then here you have Putin sort of sort of taking on the role of Hugo Chavez. I mean, nobody thought Venezuela posed any kind of threat to the United States, but Chavez apparently thought he could, you know, uh, really uh, make his place in the world by poking his eye, uh, poking his finger in the eye of the giant. Now, all this media nationalism left very little time for any kind of context about how countries approach asylum or why some nations refuse to extradite those wanted on serious charges. And very little time was spent on cases where the U.S. has protected suspected criminals, even mass murderers. The U.S. has long refused to extradite Bolivia's former president, Gonzalo Sanchez de Lozada, whose order for the Bolivian military to fire on protesters in 2003 left 67 dead. And for years, the, the U.S. refused to extradite anti-Castro terrorist Luis Posada Carrillas, who blew up a civilian Cuban airliner in 1976, killing 73 people. The worst allegations that pundits have leveled at Edward Snowden are that his leaks could endanger Americans, allegations for which there is still no evidence. We'd be having a more interesting and honest discussion about Snowden's asylum if journalists could see this story from a different perspective. And finally, Anthony Weiner is running well behind the other contenders in the New York mayoral primary. But, as you've probably heard, Weiner's involved in yet another lewd scandal. And that means national journalists are covering his campaign, and all the while wondering why they're doing so. Take ABC's This Week, which devoted an unusual amount of time to the Weiner scandal on August 4th. And they seemed to wonder why they were doing it at all. It kicked off with host Martha Raddatz. George, well, I'm going to start with you on Anthony Weiner. Why are we, and maybe I shouldn't say we, still following this so closely? <clears throat> now, George Will made the obvious point. Wiener's not going to win, so it's not clear why anyone's talking about him. That point apparently had to be made by another panelist as well. But George is right. I mean, we are not going to be talking about Anthony Wiener for that much longer. So we won't be talking about him for much longer, except for today. Raditz kept at it, wondering what to make of Wiener's wife. Panelist Soledad O'Brien suggested that they might want to consider talking about actual issues that matter. But then Raditz, after hearing that, broadened things out a bit. And a none of this can be good for the Clintons. Well, I think that's ultimately, ultimately what, where this falls back on. I think that's going to be somewhat problematic. So this is where this all ends up. How the Anthony Weiner story affects Hillary Clinton's campaign in 2016. 
It's bad enough media are covering this story as much as they are. But it's even more obnoxious when they tell us they know what they're talking about doesn't matter, but they can't seem to figure out why they're doing it in the first place. It almost makes you feel embarrassed for them. I'm Peter Hart. This was Fair TV.